Hi y'all, I'm Danny, and welcome to Every Which Way. Today, I'm hitting a local trail in search of mushrooms. Let's go. Oh, I love to find orange mushrooms. Right here we have Mycena leiana. This is the orange Mycena. Very fun to find. Um, very small, but I did spot them from far away. Very petite. They are sometimes in larger flushes than this and they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you want to play around with these, just know that your fingers are going to absolutely dye orange. These can be um, basically make your hands look like you just ate a bag of Cheetos. These aren't doing too bad right now to my fingers, but um, they can really leave some stain. So just be aware of that. Not edible, but very cute and very pretty. Yeah, make sure you don't do what I just did and step before looking. Um, now I'm trying to find where I can step that isn't covered in poison ivy. I do have shorts on, I typically have leggings, but um, I know my ankle has already been touching some poison ivy. Usually when that happens, I'm fine. I've had that happen a lot, but um, just make sure you look before you step, just to be safe. For those of you that don't know, this is what poison ivy looks like in the Midwest. So it's three leaves on a single stalk. Sometimes the leaves will be shiny, sometimes they won't have the little thumbs you can see here. And in the eastern United States, they have a species of poison ivy that is more viney, so it'll climb trees and buildings and just generally it can be higher off the ground. So make sure you check out which kind of poison ivy grows in your area. Hey look, it's a no-no stick. That's a spotted hemlock. Check out, I think it's my second video to learn more about water hemlock. It's a must. Okay, very excited about this. We have a very fresh flush of Ischnoderma resinosum. So Ischnoderma resinosum has been aptly named by my mycologist friend, Tavis Lynch, the Salisbury steak of the woods. <laughs> so this is an edible mushroom. Um, you can probably, a little hard to see on camera from far away, but I'll show you up close. There's some gutation happening here. There's like a brown liquid that's pooling at the top of the cap. But um, I will cut a few of these off and we will take a closer look. Okay, I just wanted to show you the gutation pooling on the top of the cap. So gutation is when a mushroom exudes a liquid from its cap or its pore surface. Uh, typically you'll see little beads of brown on Ischnoderma. Um, the little beadlets have likely, in the rain we had the other day, collected and pooled the brown liquid at the top of the cap. So um, one thing to look for when you're identifying Ischnoderma is it is a shelf mushroom, but it's soft and squishy when it's young. So this is absolutely perfect to be able to pick right now. I wish you could reach through the camera and squeeze it, give it a little squeeze. It's like a tough marshmallow. So as I keep looking down this log, I saw these small ones back here. And then I saw this large puppy way back here. So um, this entire one may be a little too tough for picking for edibility reasons, but the outer margin, which is white, will likely be more soft and fresh, so that's what we'll cut off today, if I can get through all these sticks. <laughs> Wish me luck. So this is what it looks like on the inside. It does look pretty meaty. This is the pore surface, which is white. And the margins are a bit squishy, like a tougher marshmallow. This 
so this was actually right next to the one I just cut. This is actually last year's flush, so it did turn hard and dry and dyed. Okay. So I briefly wanted to show you the tree that I just picked the Ischnoderma resinosum off of. It's kind of behind the bushes there, but it is a fallen dead tree. However, it has the exact same bark and is right next to this linden tree. So I'm pretty sure that that's what I just cut the resinosum off of. So it is very important to know your trees when you're identifying mushrooms. So if you're trying to learn mushrooms and you want to get some mushroom books, I highly recommend that you pick out some tree identification books as well or go on some tree identification walks in your area. So this is my absolute favorite oak tree. Unfortunately, after over 300 years, close to 400 years, this tree just fully died last year. I always love to come and touch the bark or give it a hug. I call this the grandfather tree but I love this tree. A storm took down the last of its crown that was alive. It's probably hard to see on camera, but it's massive. I've measured it and tried to determine its age. It is a burr oak and it has given me multiple flushes of hen of the woods and I'm very grateful for all the time I've gotten to spend with this tree. Ooh, pretty. Mullen! This looks like some first year mullen. It is huge. This is my hand. This is Tricaptum biformi, or the violet tooth polypore. It's not toxic, but too woody to ingest. The top of this polypore can have bands of violet, tan, or green, and will turn gray to white with age. The pore surface can be violet to tan, with pores appearing more tooth-like. Let's go home and cook up our Ischnoderma resinosum. So this is what I'm going to throw away versus what I'm going to cook. Always make sure you take enough because mushrooms cut down and really cook down. I just wanted to make note, you want to make sure to cook this mushroom thoroughly. Make sure it's nice and crispy before you take it off the stove. 
Otherwise it will be tangy and mushy and just not very good in general. Once I cooked it thoroughly, it was extremely good. Even my brother, who's a very picky eater, enjoyed this meal. I have to admit, the taste of this mushroom surprised me. It was a bit like a salty meat or a soft steak. Really good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button, share, or subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you're notified of new videos. I'll see you next time on Every Which Way. Bye. So we, here we have Every Which here. Way. Join me today as I hit a local trail. It'll hit a local trail.